Variety is the spice of life, and there is certainly much variety in the world's spiciest region, South Asia. Islam controls the hearts of many of the peoples of Bangladesh. Buddhism was born in India, spread to Nepal, China, Bhutan, and Southeast Asia, but it was embraced mainly in East Asia. Hinduism, that diverse cluster of traditional religions, has close to a billion adherents in India and Nepal. The high caste Brahmins may be harder to reach for Christ than any Muslim people, while lower caste peoples turn to him by the thousands. Some of the peoples of southern and northeastern India are Christian, but only 2% of that great nation have embraced Christ, and over 2,900 least reached peoples remain here in this region. Indian Christians are making heroic efforts to reach this region for Christ, and God is at work. Chimi Rinsen Gunrung was born in a remote Loba village in Nepal, bordering Tibet on the north. The Lobas are an ethnic Tibetan people who migrated many years ago into the kingdom of Mustang, which is now in Nepal. This is Chimi's story. I was raised in a strong Buddhist family. Being the first child gave me the opportunity to go to primary school in the village where I learned to read and write. When I became older, I moved to Lower Mustang to attend high school. After high school, I went to Pokhara for higher studies. I was taught to be a disciple of Buddha. As a disciple, I did not lie or steal, and I believed in karma, or do good, get good, do bad, get bad. As a Buddhist, I would pray to earn merit, so I would be reincarnated in a better life after I died. I tried hard to be a good person, but I could not live up to the standard. The more I tried to follow the rules, the more I suffered. I began to move away from my beliefs and began to associate with school friends who seemed to be very happy. After graduating from high school, I had difficulty finding a job. Over time, I became involved in illegal activities, which eventually led me to spend six years in prison. At that time, I felt that my life was meaningless. Because I was in prison, my family was mistreated, and they soon abandoned me. I asked myself these questions, why did this happen to me? Is it because of bad karma I am in this situation? Where is the merit my parents and I earned? When will the merit be transferred to my credit? These questions and thoughts kept coming to mind each day I was in prison. I was growing hopeless behind the prison walls. There were two brothers who were also in prison, and they were visited by another brother who was a Christian. Their brother would meet, visit, and pray with them. I watched closely their meetings, and in time I saw a change in the lives of the two imprisoned brothers. They were very happy, and I saw a real change in their lives. The two brothers were soon released from prison. One day, while I was sitting and talking with friends, I was called outside by the jailer to meet with the Christian brothers and another man who came to visit me. They asked about my well-being and, and after a few minutes of visiting, I felt a closeness to these men. They had a small booklet with them and asked me to translate it for them. The jailer gave permission for me to take the booklet. Before I could translate the book, I had to read it over many times, and each time I was compelled to read it again. After reading and understanding the book, I drew comfort knowing that all of my misfortunes were from my own deeds, but Jesus Christ suffered for all of mankind, including for me and my bad deeds. I translated the booklet called The Story of Jesus and returned it to them. Something inside me changed. 
Some time later, the brothers came to see me again and gave me a printed copy of the booklet I had translated. I also timidly asked for a Bible, which I had learned about from the booklet I translated, and they brought me one. Not long afterwards, I was pardoned and released from prison. I returned to my family and witnessed to them, and in time, they too became believers. It is difficult to tell others about Jesus in my culture, but I began sharing about Jesus with other family members and friends who also have eventually accepted Christ. Today, I work for a game conservation project that protects the endangered snow leopard high in my Himalayan home. I am so thankful to the Lord for changing my life, and I am praying that Jesus will make me an instrument to continue to reach other Loba and other people living in South Asia for the Lord. I am being mentored by the brother who brought the love of the Lord to me while in prison. Please pray for the rest of my family and extended family that they too might come to know Jesus. Please also pray for the 45,000 Lobas who still don't know Jesus and for the more than 100,000 other people living in the Mustang district of northern Nepal at altitudes between 11,000 and 13,000 feet. The climate is difficult and the area is surrounded by Chinese-occupied Tibet. Until 1992, this area was closed to the outside world. The Lobas remain one of the most isolated peoples in the world, both geographically and spiritually, and are virtually unevangelized until now. Let's pray for not only the Loba, but for all the more than 2,900 least reached people groups of South Asia as well. Pray the Holy Spirit would cause the Loba to become dissatisfied with their traditional religions and to make them hungry for the bread of life. Pray that the Lord will call people who are willing to go to Mustang. Pray for Christian tourists and hikers who will share the love of Jesus with the Loba to light the darkness with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pray that God will raise up qualified linguists to translate the entire Bible into the Loba language, since the Loba currently have no scriptures in their language. Pray the Lord will raise up a strong local church among the Loba that will bear faithful witness of His love and care. Pray that God will open the hearts of the governmental leaders in Nepal as well as the local leaders of Mustang to the truth. <laughs>